an overview to checkpoint v6 so we'll have a look at what checkpoint v6 is we'll then have a look at some uh, key terms uh, we'll look at deployment options and finally how you would manage uh, checkpoint v6 so just to note this video is an overview but the next video will be on how to implement and configure the product so what is checkpoint v6 Checkpoint V6 provides virtualized firewalls within a single gateway, similar to the concept of uh, virtual device contacts with Cisco and VDOMs with Fortinet, if you're familiar with those firewalls. And uh, you're also able to create other virtual components, such as virtual routers, virtual switches, and virtual interfaces within the VSX environment. So you can have a single VSX appliance partitioned to accommodate lots of virtual firewalls known as virtual systems. And each uh, virtual system uh, works as a security gateway, typically protecting a particular network and providing the same functionality you would get in a physical gateway. So when packets arrive at the VSX gateway, it sends traffic to the virtual system protecting the destination network. And uh, the virtual system inspects all traffic and allows or rejects it according to the rules uh, defined in the security policy. And to understand Checkpoint v you need to be familiar with some key terms. So I've created some key terms here in this section. So the first one is VSX Gateway. So the VSX Gateway, this is basically a physical appliance that hosts the VSX virtual devices. And uh, these devices include the virtual system, uh, virtual router, virtual switch, and virtual interfaces. So the VSX Gateway holds uh, at least one virtual system which is called uh, VS0. The next key term is the virtual system. So a virtual system is a virtual firewall that provides the functionality of a security gateway with full firewall and uh, VPN capabilities. So you can have multiple virtual systems running concurrently on a single gateway which is actually the whole point of Checkpoint v6. And each uh, virtual system functions as an independent entity, much in the same way as a physical security gateway is independent from other gateways. And each virtual system also maintains its own um, software blades, as well as uh, other configuration uh, parameters such as interfaces, IP addresses, uh, routing tables, app tables, dynamic routing configuration, state tables, and uh, lots of other uh, configuration parameters. And of course, it also maintains its own um, security and VPN policies to protect the network behind it. The warp link, uh, which is a virtual point to point connection between a virtual system and a virtual router or virtual switch. And each side of a warp link represents a virtual interface with the appropriate virtual device. So, when connected to a, a virtual switch in particular, VSX also assigns a unique MAC address to each. Uh, warp link since a virtual switch is layer 2. Virtual router, a virtual uh, device that functions as a physical router. So virtual routers are useful for connecting multiple virtual systems to a shared interface such as uh, the interface leading to the internet and also for routing traffic from one virtual system to another and uh, these virtual routers also support dynamic routing protocols as well. Uh, also with uh, physical routers uh, each virtual router maintains a routing table with a list of route entries describing no networks and directions on how to reach them. And depending on the deployment requirements, multiple virtual routers can be configured if, if it's required in your environment. Virtual switch, which is a software equivalent of a physical Ethernet switch uh, that can connect to physical uh, switches through physical network adapters. So. By providing layer 2 connectivity, virtual switch connects uh, virtual systems. And as with physical, uh, as physical switch, each virtual switch maintains its own forwarding table with a list of uh, MAC addresses and their associated ports. And you can also create multiple virtual switches in a virtual network topology as well within VSX. The final key term is VSLS, which is a virtual system load sharing, uh, which is a VSX. A cluster technology that assigns uh, virtual systems traffic to different active cluster members so it offers performance benefits while providing a uh, failover for individual virtual systems and it distributes the uh, virtual system instances between uh, different cluster members uh, basically by doing this the performance load is spread amongst the members as well as the 
uh, additional benefits of redundancy and failover. So you'd have two VSX appliances and you'd uh, yeah, you'd load share the traffic between them. You'd have virtual systems on each um, VSX appliance. So the next portion to this is interface options and deployment examples. And the first bit I wanted to cover is the VSX diagram on the right hand side. This one here. So the network diagram on the right shows a typical example of how VSX and virtual devices are deployed. Um, however, this is just one of many uh, ways of uh, deploying the products. Uh, this is a diagram similar to the ones in the checkpoint documentation. So I've been reading the checkpoint documentation of VSX. Uh, but in the documentation, there's lots of other diagrams and scenarios. So it's highly advised you take a look at them. Um, so looking at this diagram from the bottom, uh, here are the physical networks, the three networks here, uh, connecting to the VLAN aware switch, uh, this physical switch here, and uh, connected to their own uh, particular VLAN. So this VLAN aware switch will be uh, accommodating uh, each network on their each individual VLAN. And then uh, the physical switch has a trunk port configured here. Um, and the other side of the trunk port is the VSX gateway. So you'd configure the VSX gateway as well as a trunk port to pass all uh, VLAN traffic. Uh, the virtual system interfaces are configured with the appropriate VLANs here. So th these are the virtual systems. And they're configured with the uh, appropriate VLANs and subnet IP addresses for each network. So ex for example, network 2 will be configured on uh, VLAN 2 here. And... Um, once this is configured on VLAN 2, the um, virtual system will be listening on VLAN 2 as well. And the interface IP address will be the default gateway for Network 2. So Network 2's default gateway will be the VS2 uh, interface IP address. And then there are uh, virtu other virtual uh, systems, as you can see here, as well as a, a virtual switch. Uh, so the virtual switch connects uh, virtual systems to each other so these virtual systems can speak to each other through this virtual switch uh, and the virtual switch is also connected to the physical router and eventually the connection goes out to the internet so this link connects to this physical router and then the connection goes out to the internet so you, as you can see in this uh, environment here it's all within the VSX appliance inside here and this is all managed via a management server and the management server you can access via the standard uh, smart console applications the DMI connection by the way so I've labeled this physical link DMI connection um, is a management connection which uses a separate interface that is restricted to management traffic only so you can optionally use the data traffic for management but it's best practice to use a dedicated management interface like this one so you'd have a an interface on here, on the additional interface on the checkpoint gateway for DMI connection. So looking at physical interfaces for each virtual system. So this portion here is looking at the different types of interfaces that you can use within the VSX gateway. So in VSX you can have a separate physical interface to connect different networks to different virtual systems. Um, the problem with this method is it's not scalable because you would need many physical interfaces on the VSX gateway. Uh, this is because each protected network re will require its own dedicated physical interface. So you'd use the VLAN interfaces instead, usually, which is the next one. Uh, but you can use physical interfaces if you've only got a few uh, virtual systems, say three, four, five virtual systems, you can connect them all to their own individual virtual systems. Uh, so, it, which is a, an option for small environments. On the external side, you'll typically use a physical interface to connect the virtual switch to an uh, external physical router leading to the internet, like we have shown in this diagram here. And uh, you'll also need a physical interface for the management interface for con uh, connecting to the management server, like we have here. And optionally, a sync interface on the VSX gateway if you use using VSX clusters. You can also use additional physical interfaces as, as many as required really uh, can be installed and attached to any virtual devices uh, as needed. Uh, 
A VSX gateway can theoretically contain as many physical interfaces as permitted by the gateway's hardware. So the next one is VLAN interfaces for virtual systems. So yeah, so virtual systems can connect to um, internal protected networks using uh, VLAN interfaces. Uh, the VSX gateway will connect to a VLAN switch via an 802.1Q VLAN trunk, which is an aggregate of all VLANs passing through it. So VSX can use uh, uses VLAN tags to direct the Ethernet frame to this specific virtual system handling each network traffic. So that's an option. And uh, this deployment option is actually a, a very common deployment method. And it's good for environments where lots of virtual systems protect many internal networks uh, within the VSX gateway. So yeah, this is a very scalable and commonly used option. Warp links. So again, warp links uh, um, virtual interfaces. Uh, you would use these to connect the virtual switch or virtual router to each uh, virtual system. And you'd configure that inside the VSX gateway. And now a few deployment options. So uh, virtual router with source based uh, routing so if you don't use VLANs you can uh, also use source based routing instead with a virtual router uh, basically you would use a VSX virtual router to send traffic to the appropriate virtual system depending on the source address and uh, so the source address or even the source and destination address a combination of both would determine which virtual system the traffic is going to virtual system in bridge mode so you can use a uh, virtual system in uh, bridge mode so in the bridge mode um, it implements native layer 2 bridging instead of IP routing and uh, this allows you to deploy a virtual system in an existing uh, network topology without reconfiguring the existing IP uh, routing scheme uh, a typical bridge mode scenario can use 802.1q compatible VLAN switches on each side of the VSX gateway where each virtual system in the bridge mode protects a VLAN switched network and uh, the virtual system interfaces do not have to have uh, IP addresses since they are uh, laid to. So VSLS, uh, which I've already mentioned, so you can use uh, virtual system load sharing, uh, balancing network traffic load by distributing active uh, virtual systems across uh, amongst cluster members. So a different virtual, uh, sorry, a different member basically hosts the active uh, peer for each virtual system. Finally, how to uh, manage the VSX gateway in virtual systems. So there's uh, three different ways. The first one is the using the security management server. So regarding managing the VSX gateway in virtual systems, you can do this via the uh, smart dashboard um, console, as you would with physical uh, gateways. So you just use your smart console applications uh, via security management server. You can also do it. Uh, manage the um, VSX gateway via a multi-domain security management server which is a management server of many security management servers uh, holding multiple domains so this is really used in large-scale environments to keep management of uh, various customers offices or uh, however you decide to split up segregated from each other and all this is done via a, a single uh, multi-domain management console and the final way is a direct connection so you can jump on the vsx gateway directly via cli or browser and um, a cli is a commonly a typically used method when troubleshooting the vsx gateway or uh, retrieving uh, statistics from the gateway itself or looking at the virtual systems within the gateway so uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, video it's just an overview of checkpoint vsx i hope you've uh, found it useful but the next video will be looking at the implementation and configuration of a checkpoint VSX. Thanks for watching.